Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Hey, Mary, meet everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Tonight, we're going to stir it up with my guest, Kathy Beal. Now, Kathy is a professional astrologer, psychic, and tarot advisor who helps individuals and business owners make decisions and better understand themselves, their options, and the people in their lives, and brings to her counseling her diverse life experience as an attorney, a small business owner, a performing artist, and a writer. And she has a weekly podcast um, called Astro Insight, and that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight, because we're going to be talking about what the alignment of the planets has to say about our upcoming year. So settle back and get ready to find out about 2021, the good, the bad, and the ugly. As always, if you have any questions or comments for Kathy, um, please send me a private message in the chat room. And for those listening live outside the chat, you're welcome to join us at ParaXRadioNetwork.com. So, Kathy, nice to have you back again. And I know there's a lot of interesting happenings coming up this year. But before we jump into that, um, let everybody know about your weekly podcast and where they can find it. Oh, it's called Astro Insight. I've lost track of how many years I've been doing it. Um, it, it, it releases pretty much every Friday and it goes from Monday to Sunday and you can find it at my site, empowermentunlimited.net and also on the professional Aquarian YouTube channel. Um, and there are many places that you can download the podcast pretty much anywhere that you would get a podcast. Um, Apple carries it, all kinds of things. Uh, I also have monthly forecasts and a forecast for every full moon and new moon and those are at my site and at my youtube channel but they're not spoken well i record them the 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 podcast is what seven to ten minutes long and it's put in terms of it's like a weekly weather forecast and what things are going to be like and how to navigate it and it always has a homing thought of the week a song of the week and an image of the week to make it more interesting so what more can i tell you about it anything or should we go on with 2021 no well actually um i want to start by talking a little bit about mercury retrograde which has nothing to do with 2021 except that it's right around the corner um because um most people seem to freeze up when they know that Uh, retrograde is coming and they also blame everything negative that happens on the retrograde during that period but then other people take it in stride and I was going to ask you the best way for people to handle or deal with it but then I was also interested in seeing the article from the Farmer's Almanac that you have on your website that talks about Mercury retrograde and how it affects people um, of different signs so I guess everyone has to deal differently or is there just some basics that you can throw out and help help everybody you know not be so afraid of mercury retrograde this is this actually goes along with one of the themes of the year which is to rethink how you think and watch the power of words mm-hmm. <laughs> because it, it is possible with a mercury retrograde to uh, actually so focus on the things that are going 
fluey that it just heightens your experience of them. A Mercury retrograde happens. It's an absolutely normal occurrence. It's, um, uh, it happens three or four times a year. The first one of this year starts on the 30th, and it goes until February 20th. And a Mercury retrograde is a time when, I like to explain it best as the things that are ruled by Mercury don't operate by their ordinary rules. This has to do with what goes in and out of your mind and mouth and, and how you get around and gadgets. That's an easy way to remember it. So, um, you know, there could be uh, all kinds of things breaking down. Uh, you could, uh, this is when... Email suddenly decides it doesn't want to arrive. Um, hang on a second. I'm trying to get rid of something. There we go. That was making noise and distracting me. That said Mercury retrograde thing. Um, but, okay, it, a lot of times you have the opportunity to reorganize things, to learn things that you didn't pick up entirely the first time around. You can pick up loose threads. You can get old business uh, sort it out, and you can do research. So a Mercury retrograde is an excellent time to lay the groundwork for something that you launch after Mercury has gone direct. Mm -hmm. It can be very, very useful. And for some people, it's a really good time. Um, you see a lot of cars with one headlight during a retrograde. Uh, <laughs> actually, I see a lot of cars with one headlight all the time, but I live in a semi-rural area. Um so, it, you know, I, I have an article about this on Ohm Times. Every year I have a guide to handling Mercury retrograde, and I actually describe the difference in the quality of each retrograde season, depending on what sign it is and what aspects it's going to be making. Uh, so that's something people might find useful to look into. And, um, you know, you can drive yourself nuts. And if you and online, people, it's now become one of the cottage industries, like, Hallmark taking over every minor uh, holiday and finding it a new way to market stuff. There's there's this cottage industry and people talking about Mercury retrograde and what can you do with it. And mm -hmm. all kinds of non-astrologers have taken up the mantle and they're running around. Oh, I can teach you how to get through this. Well, just <laughs> allow yourself a little extra time is really the fundamental ground rule for everything. And it includes if you're having a conversation with someone, you may be using the same words and have different assumptions or different meanings on each side of the conversation. I, I had a I had a book contract once that had to be signed while Mercury was retrograde because it was something that had mm. had been bid out, and mm -hmm. uh, the main author uh, and the editorial board never agreed on what the book was about mm. which was and two mercury retrograde retrograde um sessions later we were fired and i was phoning people going born under a retrograde died under a retrograde so so the moral to this story is life goes on and sometimes you do have to just go ahead and set things in motion, even if Mercury is retrograde. I mean, this happens everywhere. There are scads of people who are living life, have no idea that this influence is there. And you often have the opportunity to rethink or renegotiate or redo or get out of things that you launch during a retrograde. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, what everybody thinks the scary, scary thing, because it, it, it kind of is what you make it, right? Or it, Well, it, you know, there, I will get messages from people where everything they touch is breaking down, but how yeah. you react how you react to it is a large portion of how you experience it. And if you know, oh, okay, all right, then usually the breakdowns happen and you find something in your setup that has been faulty and is up for being fixed or upgraded. So mm -hmm. it, there's often a benefit from it. It's not just like there's this random being up there swatting at us. <laughs> yeah, well, it just sounds more interesting if you say that's happening. <laughs> but, you know, actual, you know, actual life is a little bit different. <laughs> but, again, you can think it and make it and manifest it. And, and that's sometimes a little scary, too. 
because you know how free will goes. Sometimes we're just not supposed to have it. Um, okay. Oh, well, there's that. <laughs> there's that, yeah. Um, so, all right. So let's start talking about um, the good, the bad, and the ugly of 2021. But before, I mean, we're going to do that. But I got a question from the chat room that I want to ask uh, before it just goes way out of sight, and then we'll get back to it. Um, it's a question on the impact that Jupiter, the Jupiter Saturn going into Aquarius will be, how it'll be for society, more mellow or more unrest this year? Ah, all right. Now that happened on the winter solstice in December, and mm-hmm. it sets the tone for all of 2021, and all of 2021 is going to be actually working on that tweaking it and working on it and furthering it. Um, Jupiter and Saturn conjunct. It happens every 20 years. This is the first time in, a, in hundreds of years that it has happened in um, the sign of Aquarius. And it's part of moving us out of a focus on institutions and institutional collapse and focusing much more on networks and the collective and a group of individuals working together it does have amazingly positive potential for it um amazingly positive now i mean on the one hand it yes it, it carries it carries the possibility jupiter expands everything it touches saturn constricts uh, and saturn can be authority so this Could be a huge authoritarian push. But if you look at what is happening globally, the events are against authoritarian actions and much more things happening for a a greater group of people. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that GameStop thing. Yes, actually, actually, (laughs) that's a good example of it, of a bunch of people in a Reddit room deciding Huh, these big hedge fund investors are uh, shorting our little comp- this little company that we like to patronize and they're going to make a bunch of money out of its collapsing. So guess what? We're going to band together and we're going to buy the stock. And um, yeah. And, yeah. And I'll just mention right now to MJ that you did not read his mind. But um, for those of you in chat, Kathy is mehitable. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, but, but of course, I should have probably just let him think that, you know, you were that psychically able that you read his mind. But, you know, what am I going to say? Anyway, it's going to, so this does have a big impact on uh, technology being used in progressive ways. Uh, and things happening more for the for the benefit of a greater number of people, uh, rather than for a small number of people. Mm-hmm. Yes, people and sheeple. Um, got another question, so let's let's do that. Um, this one came in private chat, so I'm not reading her mind. Um, but she's curious to find out about medical in 2021. Medical things. Um. All right. Okay. Uh, so, techn- so, first off, technology is going to be expansive and hugely with huge innovations. Much more this year, um, and part of that is because of a lot of activity in the sign of Aquarius. Part of that is because. All of the bodies that in, are in Aquarius are having an action demanding contact with, I'm getting much more technical than I intended to be, but I'm going to do it anyway, Uranus, <laughs> which rules Aquarius. Okay, so Uranus is this guy that like brings change and throws lightning bolts and brings massive innovation. Uranus is where he last was during the New Deal, during the aftermath of the Depression when a lot of different ways of dealing with the environment and harnessing energy and putting people to work and creating societal safety nets came into being. So that's going to lead to technological innovations in medicine and in treatments, and this may play out over the next few years. It's not just this year. 
Mm-hmm. And if the question is specifically about um, the pandemic, there are some other influences that play into that as well. And um, I, some, well, at any rate, my, my read is that we are, we've hit the peak of the problem mm-hmm. and things will start noticeably I'm not sure improving is the word, but the issue will start dissipating like fog by about to uh, by about to end of May, and then by next December it will be will be in a completely new way of dealing with everything, okay. and it, w- it won't be the pandemic issue at that point. Does that make sense? Yes, it does actually, and it, it's a little. It also makes a little hope there. Oh, there's a lot of hope. Actually, there's a whole lot of hope because, I mean, innovative approaches, the old way of doing things going out the window. We actually had an astrological and energetic portal right around when Jupiter and Saturn met at the solstice that was uh, taking us from one way of living to another way of living. So we're in the transition period now. And there are there's bumpiness this year as we deal with it, particularly mm-hmm. in February, in June, and then it calls really stabilizes in. Oh, what did I say before? December. So December is kind <laughs> of our, our target time for the new normal. New normal. That Locking seems like a place. long way off. Um, but yeah, we have to have that. There's that the light. At the end of the tunnel, kind of, yeah, yeah. And here, and here's a way to reframe it to give even more optimism. Jupiter is very optimistic, uh, and that is we have moved out of deconstruction and collapse, and we're moving into now building the new. Yes, mm-hmm. there'll still be stuff flying around that we have to deal with. There'll still be the little monsters running around that have come out of the shadows, but we're in a building the new construct mode all year long. Not, oh my God, more of the ground has collapsed beneath my feet. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, and some people are hoping that 2021 will be the healing after 2020. Well, it's, it's definitely crawling out and dealing with the new circumstances and building something out of it that works better for us and, and coming up with, I keep using the word innovations, innovative approaches to things. Mm-hmm. And, and it involves finding ways to link up with other people, a lot of collective action and a lot more of an emphasis on what is going on uh, just right around you, like more community stuff, more, mm-hmm community gardening, more community shopping. I mean, everyone's staying much closer to home, mostly, these mm-hmm. days. And um, it's building a new way of going about our daily lives. Yeah, it's interesting because a friend of mine, Dave the Bard, um, was saying that he's been home so much that instead of going out and exploring other places... He's going out and exploring his neighborhood, and he was finding some really lovely things there that he never knew were that was there before. So, in some ways, it's kind of eye-opening for people. I think that's a beautiful example of the potential inherent in this. And 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 another one is, yeah, okay. So we've all been kind of like stuck in our houses for a long period of time and at first there was the novelty of oh i'll have a zoom cocktail hour or oh i'll meet people and i'm i am noticing that just in the last month or so there's a real change in the vibe of these meetings of of friends getting together and doing things together online and a much more of an awareness and open gratitude i'm in several groups that do this Mm -hmm. and um and the whole quality of the interaction has locked into conscious appreciation of what we have created together. And this will be a big theme of February. All right, just won't be me and my pals doing this. It will be a lot of people. Well, things, yeah, things are changing. I mean, here in L.A., um, you know, we've been hit really hard and and 
really um, confined and don't leave the house, damn it, you know, and, and all that. Um, but starting Friday, we're getting our restaurants open again um, for they can, people can eat outside now. I mean, the restaurants didn't close completely, but you didn't have any place to eat. And so things are opening up even here where it was like really, really, really horrible. So that that's kind of what you're saying. I mean, things are going to expand and get a little bit better as we go. And there's a conscious element to it, all right? It's not – well, I mean, right now there's a bit of uh, – I'm sorry, I made the mistake of part of Highway 1 is gone near Monterey. Whoa. If I think about it, I can come up with the astrological signature for that. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. uh, we are, we are, we're not, we're, we're done with just sitting and, and sulking in our homes. And we've had a long period of time of, uh, with all of the energies that were moving through the sign of Capricorn last year. Um, we've had a long period of time of reprioritizing and getting down to our own personal bottom lines and slowing down and simplifying our daily lives and being much more aware of what's going on with our bodies. And I, I know there's been almost like an epidemic of people switching to plant-based diet, mm. which is, and that's an unawareness of all kinds of stuff. And so now I don't see anybody running back to what they used to do, mm-hmm. even when things are the, the, even when things are much much more open, because everything this year is pushing us toward implementing new constructs based on the reprior our our our, re, our streamlined experience of physicality. Mm. You know, I mean, I I think this is going to be a really good awakening for people if they stop and listen and watch and observe um it may be very eye-opening for uh, the ability to kind of make people a little bit more hopeful um and not so because there's a lot of people grousing all the time now and even in the worst of times there there is things to be happy about or or at least try to find so this may this may be really, really good all around in in the long run. I think. Oh, I think we're. This is going to be a doorway year. This uh, in history, we'll look back and go. This is when we were in the corridor that changed from one massive way of being to another. And the mm-hmm. the, par- the parallel I have goes back way far in history. I like to look at cycles and recurrences and. Uh, Honestly, there is something going on right now, astrologically, that parallels this, and uh, it harkens back to the Black Death, when social distancing was so bad that people were nailed into their houses. That's a little extreme, but but (laughs) what that... What that pandemic did was Mm -hmm. change everybody's relationship to authority, which was the church. The Protestant church broke off, so thought about authority and people's relationship to God changed where they could go directly to God through the church, rather through a Protestant church, rather than having to go through levels of priests and the Pope and pay all these things for your for your afterlife so an option split off and the renaissance happened afterwards too and there's Mm -hmm. that level of blossoming and change in store for us it's that dramatic wow and there are some people that are shaking their heads and going nah nah that can't happen that's okay (laughs) The doubting Thomases. So, so will it be so obvious that even a doubting Thomas will have to acquiesce and say, "Oh, she was right." It will take them a while, and that's because we also have a dual series of realities. We're running two worlds right now, and that's astrological, and we're at the peak of that as well. Okay, do you want to explain that a little bit better? What okay, uh, there's kind of a bifurcated reality going on. There are, and and, and I think. Uh, People are taking the same surface events and drawing two completely different 
beliefs about what just happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, the planet Neptune, which I call the cosmic fog machine, <laughs> has has been in an absolute pumped up relationship with the nodes of the moon, which represent where we're what we're moving away from and what we're moving toward. Mm -hmm. And they currently are right now moving us away from outmoded philosophies and beliefs and toward gathering more and new information. So not just going on what we were taught or what we've always heard, um, but getting new information and revising and updating our beliefs, the power of the word. And these two guys have been pumping, pressuring Neptune for quite a while and sending more and more fog off. And there are multiple, there are signs involved with this that are signs of duality. So that has created Neptune's Pisces, the fish swimming in two directions. And this has intensified two very different narratives going all over the world about everything that's going on. And you can name a topic and there are people who will tell you two distinctly different things about it. Even innocuous posts on social media will draw some stranger who just happens to know someone you know who tells you really nasty things about the, the completely contrary to this. And this also, you know, this is responsible for people um, who uh, have elaborate theories of all kinds of celebrities who faked their deaths decades ago who are just sitting around waiting to come back. So mm -hmm. that's all right. There's a lot of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have been divided. I mean, this whole year. Um, I mean, you know, it was one side or the other. There wasn't much middle ground. And, and so that kind of makes sense. It just carrying on from last year. Yeah. And, and it, 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 it intensified last year and it's hit peak now and it's starting to dissipate ever mm -hmm. slow, ever so slowly. And this is one of the things that will be different by May and it will just be a non-issue by December. Yay! <laughs> That's so hard to believe, but I mean, I'm I, I'm 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 with you on that. I mean, it just it's been it's been so rough and tough, and and you know, everybody like civil war divided, <laughs> and so it's kind of hard to believe. Even though they say that you know we have to get used to the new norm, normal. Um, we can't get back to what it was because I guess a whole lot was lost. Well, I guess I know. But uh, it'll, it'll, you know, by December, everybody will be happy. Well, well those, no, those yeah. that can be happy. Okay, how about that? Um, <laughs> there's always people that aren't going to be happy. But, well, you know, but people I, will be happy before then. It's possible. You can be happy now. But a lot of the outside influences that have been uh, making things so uncomfortable will have settled into something recognizable that we can live with easily. Right. Right. By no. December. Yeah. No, I like that. And um, we're getting close to a break. So I think when we come back, let, let's break this down into good, bad, and ugly. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and of course, if people have questions, they can throw them in. But it'll be interesting just to kind of break it up, you know, kind of a little synopsis of the good, a little synopsis of the bad, a little synopsis of the ugly. And, um, you know, we can, you know, pick it up from there. If okay. That, I mean, if that makes sense. But, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. and, and, okay, I'm, I'm just reading here, and you probably saw it true, talking about um, Neptune. Ceiling Cat says, um, Neptune is setting right in her natal moon, and her dreams are wild lately. So, so why would that happen for people that wouldn't understand? Well, Neptune does rule dreams, and the moon is is uh, rep rule is your um, emotional driver. It's what you need in order to feel safe and secure. And so, Neptune going across that would really intensify uh, your connection to something that's otherworldly. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then there's the P.S. She goes, "They're weird," and I mean weird. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how well, many people have been having vivid dreams lately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I actually have, I don't 
you know, usually I don't remember my dreams, or if I do, it's the minute I wake up and then they're gone. But the last few nights, I've been waking up to maybe remembering three different dreams overnight. You know, I mean, you know, you fall asleep and then you get up to go to the bathroom and then you come back and there's a different dream and back and forth. And and for me, that's kind of unusual. So maybe it's not just um, her, you know, that Neptune's in her moon. Maybe just Neptune is kind of sprinkling us with funny dreams and things. (laughs) If you're open to it, it's there for you. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let, let's take a break. So everybody sit tight and we'll be right back. With Marla Brooks, right after these important messages. From Haunted Road Media comes an exciting new novel by author Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Two lost souls ripped apart by murder in another century find each other again in the present only to discover that the murderer has followed them through time can their love save them or will history repeat itself find out in this captivating new novel by marla brooks soul connection a deadly obsession available now on amazon.com and at barnesandnoble.com You've no doubt heard of Tango and Cash, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Perhaps it takes two to tango. Well, now, on the first and third Thursdays of each month, there's a show called Tango and Friends at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network with your host, Bruce Tango. And yes, there will be at least two to tango on each episode, sometimes even more. There's going to be lots of topics and lots of guests you'll all know and lots of support. Prizes. Tango and Friends, every first and third Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening into Stirring the Cauldron. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up if you don't already know about the free weekly Witches Oracle Deck readings that I post on my website every Monday. Now let me answer the age-old question before you ask it, which is, well how do I know it's for me? And the answer is pretty simple. If you weren't meant to see it, you wouldn't know it was there. So if you're curious about what the week has in store for you, pop on over to marlabrooks.com every Monday and scroll down on the homepage, and there it will be. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Okay, here we're back, and my guest tonight is Kathy Beal, and we're talking about 2021, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So flip a coin. What do you want to talk about, the good, the bad, or the ugly? Let's get the ugly out of the way. Good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that works. All right. Um, now, I mentioned that I deal in recurrences, and there is an aspect that's been happening. It does involve Neptune. Um, that we last went through during the (laughs) Civil War. Interesting that that phrase has been coming up. And um, Pluto is coming back for the next couple of years. uh, We're moving towards where Pluto was when the U.S. was formed. So we have some of the revolutionary vibe happening with that and then two pluto cycles before that was when the reformation happened that i mentioned before so we have some energies brewing that a have been around for a long time below the surface and were not dealt with and b are not going away any time soon so there are things that have been stirred and brought to light that are in our psyche this is for the U.S., but any, I mean, there's stuff going on all over the world. Anything that was brewing in the late 1800s, anything that was brewing in the late 1700s, there are things still going on now with big issues about um, victimization, martyrdom, who's on top, who's not on top, uh, uh, scapegoating. I think it's probably a better way to put it. Mm. Uh, scapegoating, uh, racism, and then massive, massive inequality of power and uh, money, which has a lot to do with the French and the American revolutions. And I'll just point out, it's fascinating that 
uh, in the late 1700s when Pluto was where it is now, uh, England lost a major chunk of property, the, U- the what became the United States, and now it's going through Brexit, breaking off its relationship to a huge chunk of property of geographical expanse. So these are just uncomfortable influences that aren't going to just magically disappear. And they are things that we have to deal with. And the U S in particular is in the throes of a multi-year process of deciding who we are as a people and what structure of government we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, are thinking about the way it was and, you know, the good old days and, and, but, you know, every time you look back at the good old days, people that were in that era didn't think they were the good old days. They would go, you know, farther back. Well, when I was a kid or when I was a kid, you know, so that um, people are going to just kind of figure out what is new, kind of what you're saying. I mean, maybe, Open minds are going to change. People will change their thoughts about what should be and what can be or what they would like it to be. Um, I don't know. It, it's definitely change. And there's a lot of stuff that needs to be ironed out. And, and, and issues of equality. And I see someone has put who's on first. Yeah, it's not just an Abbott and Costello sketch. It's uh, <laughs> big issues of who's of, of equality and we're in a stretch for the next couple of years of a, a real strong focus on building things that are more diverse and that have that, I don't know, that layer that um, make the playing field more even. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it just, I guess it's what people want and, and, um, whether they can get it or not, I think you can if you try hard enough. But yeah, there there has to be. Is there? Do you think there's going to be like um, some force out there, physical force? I mean, people or 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 something that will help us see where we're headed or where we want to be headed, or you know, will will it not be an individual choice? But will you think there will be? people out there giving help or, or institutions or, you know, something like that. Oh, I think we're seeing that already. And I think you, um, this, this, just look at the, uh, political, uh, organization, especially, I, I think Stacey Abrams is an example of a person who would be leading people into, you know, looking at the power of the collective and different ways of going about stuff. So, um, so every, every, each of these three categories has a flip side that you brought up the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the ugly mm-hmm. has actually does tie into, um, the good, which is a lot of awakening and doing things differently. Now, as for, as for the bad, there's a, a the good, the, the good and the bad are kind of like faces, different faces of the same thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So we do have, uh, economic rockiness coming, uh, we're in it, and there's like a waking up and actually admitting what the situation is and trying to do something about it. Uh, and again, we've got a recurrence of an influence that was last around during the New Deal when social safety nets were put in place and when there were government programs that were devised to deal with the environment differently and put people to work. So watch for more of that going on. But individual people, I mean, everybody is going to have a bumpiness of dealing with the the institutional collapse and the lack of focus on uh, normal people's lives in recent years. And this ties back to the ugly, which is this big, this huge inequality of the, the income inequality in certain highly developed countries has become cartoonish and we will be dealing with the ramifications of that um, all year long but that comes with 
opportunities to do something about it. So I, I said that an, the, an optimistic new construct, new way of going about things, fused into place on the solstice, and all year long we are working on how we bring that into being and breaking old structures and using the power of committed action, committed group action, and actually even committed governmental action to bring innovation into uh, things having to do with money, the economy, the arts. What's going to happen? I mean, Broadway's been shut for almost a year. Wow. All these actors out of work at different yeah. ways of going about things. Um, there's, I was heading somewhere with this. Uh, we'll come back to it in a second. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, uh, and, and uh, you know, the role of uh, uh, how we deal with our food supply. That's mm-hmm. a big part of it, too. And uh, it's a process, and we're going to be working on that all year long. And it's, you know, it's not always comfortable. It's, it's rocky. But there's more of an attitude of we're in this together, and what can groups of people come together and do? And I have an example of that that kind of fits with all this, and it came into being on an astrologically important day. For a number of years, there's a small group of people that had a non-government organization that's been going around to countries arguing for nuclear disarmament. And they got – and I have a friend who's been uh, – uh, at the height height of this, and they got fifty countries ultimately to sign the nuclear ban, and it went into effect. Now the U.S. is not a party to it. It went into effect on the day that Mars action met Uranus in Taurus. And it was a small group of people that just worked on this and worked on this and worked on this, and they got. It's now against international law to use nuclear arms. Mm -hmm. Small group of people banding together for something with a greater impact. That's that's one of the examples of the sort of thing that's going to be happening. Don't underestimate what your power is, all you people listening to this. You and your buddies can bring change into being. (laughs) Yeah, and I think that, you know, people kind of used to know that. But then they got slapped down a lot and yeah. gave up. And so if that can happen again and, and everybody can realize that they're here to help, to do, they can, you know, um, that just changes a whole attitude to the positive anyway. You know, you're getting back your feeling that you are not just somebody that's sitting on attack. You know, you could actually do something. And that ties into the other big theme of the year that I haven't really elaborated on too much, and that's what the eclipses are doing and also, well, the the, the whole business of changing our relationship to uh, information, to becoming incredibly aware of the power of words, the real world, Mm -hmm. on the ground impact of words and of beliefs and going through a massive upgrade. So there will be big issues of what social media platforms are doing, what different broadcasters are doing. There may be a return to governmental regulation that got thrown out um, a long time ago. I could go on a long tear about that from my lawyer background. Um, but we'll be, see- it will be given many opportunities to become aware of what thoughts are always running around in our mind and what we're emphasizing to ourselves and what beliefs we're just unthinkingly living by and consciously upgrading all of that. Mm -hmm. And it's about time because honestly, people have given up. I mean, okay, there, there are two sides. Here we go. We're going to split again. We're doing the activists and the people that have given up. Mm-hmm. And and again, no middle of the road. And we need to work that all back in. You know, black and white, gray is the most important place to be. Not in the black, not in the white, gray, because that's miracles happen. And change can well, happen. If every if individuals increasingly 
become aware of the power of what they let in their mind and out of their mouths. And just your frame of reference, small changes on an individual level have a way of rippling out and rippling out and rippling out. And uh, it's really amazing. Well, I, I like to say, you know, we, we have this way of looking at your viewpoint using the, the image of a glass. Do you look at life as the glass half empty or the glass half full? I have mm-hmm. discovered in recent years that there are people who look at the glass as, oh, it's made of lead and it's cracked and it's filled with sludge or toxic waste or poison. Mm-hmm. You know, and, well, yeah. there's also looking at the glass as, I have a glass, woohoo! And I okay. can, and I can fill it. Look at this. Mm-hmm. And and when you start shifting these things, and Mercury retrograde is a really good time to play with this. Mm-hmm. Um, when you start shifting these things, the way you experience what happens to you changes. Two people can have absolutely the same events occur to them, and if one person is always playing, oh, poor me, or just, you know, has a chip on their shoulder the size of a, of a SUV, and the <laughs> other person is, oh, my goodness, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere to, uh, anyway, um, look at the glass is drunk. Ha, no. Well, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm also looking at the chat as I say this. So yeah. um, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying to people that if you start, clearing out dumping out actually do visualizations to get junk out of your mind Mm -hmm. uh tasha silver has a great great process of a god box where you just when you just write stuff down and put it on a piece of paper and dump it in the box i i filled mine up so much i finally just emptied it because i realized i just that would be a beautiful symbolic act to just get rid of all this stuff from like two years worth of handing things over to a source other than me and that can be very useful you can blow it up you can burn it up Mm -hmm. you can write it down and set fire to it i you know pyros yeah yeah Yeah. we do that in witchcraft sometimes don't we Um, yes (laughs) yes yes. and you know manifest and and all that good stuff Uh, (laughs) so yeah but I, I just think it's really important and so let's let's go to the good because the good so far is very positive from the few things that you've been talking about that that you know people don't need to look the other way they can kind of pop out and you know from the ostrich hole and and actually look forward to things okay good good number one be your freaky most idiosyncratic syncratic self all right just do it the rules of the game have changed don't hide anymore come out be unapologetically who you are. That's really good. Two, find the other people who like how you're freaky and go be freaky together. Go create <laughs> things together. I mean, there's really, there's, the, and, and, and take chances. And this is the time to do the stuff that you always had on your maybe someday list. Well, you know, just, just do it. You've made your list and it, well, I mean, I'm not even being coherent. I'm so worked up about this, but there's a lot of stuff that used to be a goal that used to be important that just seems completely meaningless now. So when you know what the few things are that really do have meaning for you, commit to them, go about them and take chances. This year has many opportunities to bring amazingly new stuff into your life Completely unconventional, different situations. The old ways were not working. We And you get to kind of build it from the ground up. Uh, the circle that I was in years ago used to say, you know, we're, we're making it up as we go along. Well, you get to do that. Mm-hmm. You get to do that. Well, the shackles are off. I mean, you can take them off. You have the capability of taking them off. I mean, you can leave them on if you want. But, you know, again, it's, it's empowerment. We can do things now that we haven't been able to do for a while, but we need to trust our gut and, and, you know, say that we can and know that we can, not just say we can, know we can. And also be honest with yourself about who you are, you know, so um, live in accordance with your own values and with the few, and it is very few, things that are absolutely non-negotiable for you and be... um, uh, appreciative 
of what I'm, I'm being distracted by the chat. Thank you so much. Um, uh, <laughs> so that too. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> anyway, you know, be appreciative of the people that, that you have real heart connections with. Uh, for example, this week was my birthday and I got flowers from uh, a colleague, uh, an acquaintance. It took me a while to even figure out who they were. A really beautiful, huge, expensive bouquet of flowers thanking me for the insight that she was getting from me all the time. And I was just flabbergasted that she went to the trouble to do this. So, so, you know, put your energy behind what is important to you. You know, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, who, you know, who your heart is connected to and value and cherish those connections and do things with them. Mm -hmm. Create with them. Put your resources behind the stuff, but um, put your resources behind the stuff that have meaning to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, anything that has meaning now that that you've put on the back burner because you just kind of either gave up or didn't care or, you know, were thinking about too many other things, it's time to go digging for it and bringing everything back that you lost. Because nothing is completely lost if you couldn't bring it back. Absolutely. And it's still there. And there was stuff that you knew when you were a little kid. And uh, that was un- it was just uncomfortable for adults. It was inconvenient for adults. That is what is needed now. Your own little guidance is what's going to get you through here and doing things different ways. Looking for, I keep saying this, innovative approaches don't go with the, well we've always done it this way um you know look at things sideways and going and and create new stuff i mean it's actually extraordinarily exciting what is possible to have happen with this a very very different world with an awful lot more respect for more people than mm-hmm. we've been experiencing yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's time to just like stand up and dust yourself off and start all over again. There, that's Broadway. right, Broadway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm old too, um, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, that that's really important to know. And this is even in 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 the real sense, in the metaphysical sense, and we've kind of alluded to it already. Know that you can change things. Know that you can do things, even if it's the simplest thing. You know, um, and now is the time to pick it up. I mean, astrology plays a big part in our lives, whether we realize it or not. And to have, like, you, Kathy, on and talk about it and kind of explain what's going on and and the possibilities, you don't have to be an astrologer to understand it. Um, You're just giving people a little bit of information about Again, the shackles can come off. You can do what you want. You can stand up. You can open your mouth. You can believe in what you believe again and make things happen. And it's really, really important. And an image for you to keep in mind that ties all of this together, going back to the days of the French Revolution, is there is the story, I don't know whether this is true or not, but the imagery is perfect, that when the Bastille, when the big, when the Bastille was stormed, that was the big um, prison in mm-hmm. Paris, and the walls were torn down, prisoners stood within the concept, within the contours of the walls, because that's what they were used to. They didn't just go running into the streets going, oh, we're free, we're free. So <laughs> look at how you're standing in the contours of the rubble of what used to be. Step mm-hmm. outside. Yeah. I think it's really important to know that you can, again, and because I think people have lost faith, they've lost hope, they've lost um, their minds <laughs> in some cases, and um, it, it's time. So it. You know, there will be the ugly, there will still be the bad, but the good can come out on top at the end if you really want it to, right? And the good is dealing with a lot of the bad and the ugly, honestly. The, mm-hmm. the good is dealing with it. And um, an, an excellent uh, homing thought, I like to use homing <laughs> thoughts, for this is, show me another way to look at this. And... Uh, 
you will find that there are other options. There are other ways of going about things. Um, that there's a way that you're if anything you're broken off from or liberate is there's a form of liberation and awakening in every lightning strike that hits in your life. Mm-hmm. And it maybe it's that you see, oh, okay, that's what's really going on here. Huh? Now I will deal with it. And actually, that's the overarching. That's what this whole year boils down to. Now we are dealing with it, and we are building something new out of it, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. And it, it will go away if we want it to, <laughs> and, and that'll help. All right, we've got like uh, two, three minutes. So I want you to tell everybody again what your website is, what they can find there, what, you, what your services are, what you're up to, all that good stuff. My website is empowermentunlimited.net, like safety net, and I have a weekly podcast that's um, – about 10 minutes long, I have uh, written forecasts for each month, new moon, full moon. All of this is also available on my YouTube channel, which is the Professional Aquarian. Um, I also have a page on Facebook, Empowerment Unlimited. Uh, If you're really into astrology, I have a group called the Astro Insight Lounge where we discuss the uh, astrological imagery at work in uh, news items a lot. Um, Mm. And I have a Patreon uh, slash Kathy Beal. Um, So I do private readings. I do all kinds of things. Some of it is, oh, thank you, Ceiling Cat, putting my link in. Uh, I I will use astrology or tarot. And um, a lot of people want to understand what their options are at a particular moment in time. Or like, ah, what's happening? What can I do with this? I do relationship consultations. Um, all kinds of stuff, helping people plan times to do things. And then you take time to come on shows like this and and spread the word, which is (laughs) very important too. (laughs) So I think, um, yeah, people, I mean, I I went over to the website and I kind of got lost for a few minutes looking at here, looking at, that's how I found the thing from the Farmer's Almanac about the zodiac Mm -hmm. signs and, and Mercury retrograde. There's a lot, a lot of stuff that they can find out about you, learn about you, and um, yeah, and you've already gotten one request to come back on the oh, show. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. And hey, anybody out there who's into, oh, I don't know, science fiction, if you go to the Astro Insight tab and then the Articles tab, I have uh, long articles about the astrology of Star Trek. Gene Roddenberry, Star Trek, the premiere, all of the different series through the last, I'm, I don't have the current, I don't have, it's not through Picard. Um, and the people who played it, and also the same for the first 12 Doctors in Doctor Who. I have to oh, update it to nice. put the 13th Doctor in, so. Very, very cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, and again, you're going to come back at some point, and we'll get, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but I want to thank you for being here tonight, and I want to thank everybody for listening in, not just tonight, but on the podcast as well. And until next time, everybody, blessed be, and merry meet again. Good night. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited.